Hello everyone, welcome back to Game Brigade. My name is Brian. And I'm a duck. That's right, that, that makes sense. Today we are going to be talking about the 10 games in Jesse's collection that are the best games. For any of you that don't know me, I'm Quackalope. I have a small YouTube channel. You can follow the link down below to go find out what Brian I'm thinks are the worst, worst games. games. They that are was the worst. a spicy list. They are the worst. Did. And now, any of you that are joining from that, welcome. I want to remind you to hit that subscribe button down below. We're uh, trying to trying to get you some numbers. Trying to get up to 10Ks by the end of the year. Uh, That's been our goal. And hit that subscribe button even if you don't agree with him, but leave a thumbs down so he can see his percentage just <laughs> this way. So there are reasons I picked the games on this list. This okay. was an intentional list because Jesse does have a lot of good games. So going through and being Seven. the 10 best, but I wanted to be like, okay, here are games that are good, yep. and why are they good? Okay. So the first one is one you introduced to me. Oh, man. Detective. Detective City of Angels from Van Ryder Games. Talk to yeah. me about this thing. This game is an incredible game. It's a one versus many-ish, but you're also playing against the people on your own team where you are detectives trying to solve a case of some sort. Yeah. And the person you're playing against is the Chisel, who is kind of like the DM of the system, uh, kind of curating your experience through the game, but they're also trying to trick you or send you on red herrings. It's a, an incredible experience, and we have some playthroughs on your channel at some point. I want to be very clear. I would have been entirely satisfied to just play 13 sessions yes. of this while you were here. He was He's you, not kidding. You and West literally had to say, Jesse, Stop. we've been playing this for the past eight hours. <laughs> Stop. He's not, the thing is, is you're Let's not even kidding. Let's move on to other content. We're, I love this game. <laughs> I love game. this game. And I wanted, I kind of wanted to signal boost that one more time mm. because it's such a good game it's and I've never heard anyone talk about about. about it. Never heard under talked about. Never heard about I should go on a list of underrated games, I think. So this is a title that you have not played yet. Oh, we're lifting. We're Still lifting stuff. I have played stuff. this. I have, have played, played this. this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't opened my copy of it yet. I want to do a full, like, fancy unboxing video. Uh, but this is Guards of Atlantis. Guards of Atlantis 2. Yep. This is going to have a, uh, a new campaign on GameFound here shortly. Uh, this game is so good because it takes that MOBA defense, tower defense system and really expertly designs a game where you are truly using your strategy and skills against your opponent. I'll tell you... The first time I played this, I was not sold on it. Yeah. I tried it on my own on uh, on tabletop, uh, tabletop uh, not tabletop, but Tabletopia. Yeah. Uh, and I tried it with a few friends, and the teach was terrible, and the mechanics were clunky. I think they gave us cards that we just didn't, couldn't run very well. Yeah. It was a bad experience. There are times I can agree I with that. I just recently sat down with the designer himself okay. and one of his playtesters, because they're working on the new content that's coming out, yep. and they ran me through a very clean teach and like we're able to answer questions. We right. got it up and running on the computer, which is my least favorite place. And now I'm very excited about it's this. It's a good game. But I, for a long time, had, had written it off because that first soiled experience online. And that happens quite a bit, actually. Yeah, I and think so. Just, I'm glad that you gave it another shot because this game is an incredible experience, and I love that it's a no luck game. Hmm. It's a very yeah. very good one. Cool. This is good. This is this is one that you're going to see more coverage on the channel here soon. Well, his channel and mine. This probably one our channels. is a gem. Inish. Shira loves this, this game. This is from Matago, and this game has a mechanic that I just love, and it's the drafting mechanic. But what I love about it is you start to learn who's taking what, mm. which I think is an incredibly cool design because the way the mechanic works in this one is you get your starting four cards and you pass one, but then you're going to pass two. So you can eventually actually keep cards. You can send cards you drafted because you're like, oh, the cards that I got from my my passer here are better. I love that mechanic. I've never seen that done in another game that I've played. And I also really like the way the uh, area control board kind of incentivizes people to take control, but it also doesn't mean you have to have conflict. Okay. Because you can just be in different regions and just win based off some of the, the random mechanics. I have had good experiences with this game. I've had mixed experience with this game. Okay. Shira loves Inish. Okay. I am always willing to play it. Yep. So this is like a seven for you. It's like a, yeah, rising though. Yeah. Every play I have, it goes up a little bit, but it's still one that I'm. It, it, it intimidates me a little bit. Yeah, it's a fun game. I really enjoyed that one. This is one that. Um, let me see if you can guess it. I, first off, it's a hidden movement game where people would rave about it online and would never say why they liked it. Uh, and it took me forever to figure out 
I had to buy the game and play it to figure out why is this game so highly rated. Are, are you thinking, is it is it Mind? It is Mind. Mind MGMT, coming from Off the Page Games. No one would ever tell you why they like I it. I feel like you guys and anyone, any other creators out there... There's a feeling the game creates. There's an experience of play. Well, the, the part about this game that is the coolest thing I've ever seen introduced is the minor legacy elements yeah. that are introduced. Yeah. It's so cool. In this game, there is a book of cards uh, that you're going to be introduced more mechanics and powers. Like self-balances in a way. Self-balances. Yeah. So if uh, a certain person or certain side is winning all the time, it's going to increase the strategy and the skills for the other team. Well, just a tiny mechanic. Just a little bit. Just a little taste. Just a tip. Yeah. And it's great. I really liked that implementation of it. The actual core gameplay is fun. It's a great little sure. hidden movement game. I like it. It's a little busy for me at times because you're like, this is just an ugly map. But it works within the theming. Yeah. But that single mechanic is so freaking good. Nice. Uh, yeah, I heartily agree with you on this. Although... Wes Todd, the, the guy that should be a fan of yeah. things like hidden movement games, does not like this he game. He did tell me that he was like, when, he, when I pulled out the box, he goes, I highly disagree with this one. Does it highly disagrees with it, which is crazy to me. This one is the did smallest you see, game. Did you see my wooden? Uh, I haven't. I've got, I've got like $1,200 worth of like dragon shield sleeved mat cards. Really? Wooden insert. So I saw your, uh, I saw your box of Yeah. Stuff. So Marvel Champions would be... Yeah. My lifestyle game, if I didn't already have both the lifestyle game of Kingdom Death yep. and the lifestyle game of running a YouTube channel. That's true. This, that, would, be, this <laughs> would be the game that my friends know I love, that I play by myself, that I open up the pack the moment yep. it comes in and I, I read the stuff. Like You ask me, like, is there anything that you still pay attention to? Anything yep. you still buy? I'll tell you this. I've got a Team Covenant subscription to Marvel Champions. I get every it's covenant. Oh, yeah. yeah, I get every, every, every uh, I get every release that comes out as soon as it hits. Uh, as soon as it hits, and that's not going anywhere. Yeah, Marvel Champions is a is a lifestyle board game, L uh, LCG game, from, living card game from uh, Fantasy Flight. What I love about this game is that each hero ha has a unique feeling to it. Mm. I can play Iron Man, and I do feel like Iron Man. You play Captain America, you feel like you're throwing your shield. Yep. You have your e heroes, well, depending on the way you build your deck. I enjoy the way this game makes everyone feel unique and fun and powerful in their own way. And you can enjoy a certain character or hero and have a very good experience with that. But the modularity of the uh, villains and the encounter sets means this is a game that you could probably have just one game in your collection and this one would probably never go grow old. Because yeah. you can just constantly be shifting it and changing it around. Uh, it's really one of the best games I've ever played. Yeah, fantastic. Marvel Champions, heartily agree with that. Uh, it's one that probably needs to be on my top 10 this this next time I do a top 10 list. Yeah, it needs to be. In fact, I've done too many top 10s and it's constantly on there. I'm like, I gotta <laughs> get some new games. I zeroed out Kingdom Death, by the way. Did you? It's, Kingdom it's Death just is zero. just, it's, it's always zero. It's unfairly positioned. This one's an interesting one Wingspan. because Wingspan is on here because this is the game <clears throat> that, for me, is the best game I've had for introducing people to the, to the hobby. Really? For, is it because it's pretty? It's pretty, it's approachable, mm. and I don't think the mechanics are that complex, but they are complex enough that if they understand it, they can understand a lot of other games. Do you ever go, is it always just base game, or do you ever go all in with the expansion? So I only own the European, okay. and it's always mixed in anyways. I think some of them can be. I think some of them make it a bit overwhelming. Yeah, I haven't tried the Pacific or the You get Australian, ones. you get some other resources, yeah. you get some other types of mechanic cards. I haven't even tried it, and I know they just came out with the Asia big box. Yep. I haven't tried them. So right now I do have uh, European Birds. It lives permanently with all the other games. It's, a, it's a, an expansion that I don't think you ever un, unplay with. Mm. But what I like I said, this game is a game I will introduce uh, relatives, like mother-in-law, father-in-law, people who are not board gamers. I said, just give this game a try. I think you're going to love it. Mm. And they almost always do. That's cool. And it gives me the feeling that, okay, I think we can move on to maybe a little bit more complex games or games of similar complexity, if you understand it's the been, mechanics. It's been big for our hobby. Yeah. It's been big for our hobby. Wingspan, cool. I'm on board with that. This one is kind of a nod because it's really one of the best games you probably have, if not the best one in this okay. house. 
<laughs> we just played this last night. We did. Man, what a good time. You actually yeah. have a, probably a gameplay video coming out on your channel. We should. We or should have it. might already be there or is coming out. Depending on the time of the of release. Of West, me and you playing. And I have to yeah. say, one of the most competitive ends I've ever seen. Very close. Yeah. I really enjoyed the way that game ended. One of the highest scoring games I've seen as well. <laughs> it was a very good game. What I liked about, uh, well, that game in general was very fun, but Dune Imperium is a game that has just aged like fine wine for me. Mm. As, as I've played it more and added more expansions to it, it has just become such a good competitive game. Expansions are key. You need to have I them. felt like the base game fell a little flat for yep. me compared to the other world replacement deck building style games that are out there specifically lost ruins or arnak and endless winter yep. uh i think now having played it with you with the expansions included this is a real contender right now yeah. for the best of the bunch i think, I think it, it be. beats lost ruin for me with the expansions uh, uh, I, I played lost ruin just recently again with the yep. with the leader's expansion the leader's expansion is very nice but i was like eh. well my my leader was kind of boring eh. You know, but I was like, I, it's it's okay. I think Dune takes down Lost Ruins. Hundred percent. The question is, does it take down Endless Winter? And that's a hard, that's a hard yeah. conversation. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about that right now. All then. right. <laughs> I had no idea that was there. Endless Winter. This is uh, by Fantasia Games, brand new company. Kind of, I think this is like one they of the first titles. They've done it for me. Yeah. They've done they've done perfect scores across the board in terms of content creation. What? The thing that's interesting about this, and the okay. reason why I don't know, I think Dune is still higher for me. Okay. But what I think is cool about this is they took uh, a lot of different individual mechanics. Modules. Module mechanics, but to my opinion, blended them seamlessly really with good. the theme. Yeah. I think the the animal side with the hunting and the get, gathering your resources, beautiful. Building up your settlement. Building your settlement. Moving around the area control with your because you're migrating. A little uh, bit like monument, shrine. The monument with the building your stuff. Yeah. They took all these little inter things. That, and I hear people talking about, oh, there's so much stuff. I'm like, they play so interconnectedly well together. It does. To me. It does the classic Euro thing where it gives me too much stuff to play with. Yeah. And yet every time I play it, I get to experiment with another combination. You get experience with everything. And the combinations work. Yep, and I really enjoy the way that they also even use the Eclipse phase uh, to move the game forward. It's a beautiful game. I, I could see, this would have never been a conversation if I had not just played all of the expansions from Dune. Yeah. I could see Dune with everything included taking down this. I think it does. I'm not I sure. Do. I think I'm it does. not sure. Now, the only thing I really like about uh, Endless Winter, the, the big thing about it, is that the modules are very easy to add. You get, there's a bunch of modules, they're very simple, and once you play it once, you're like, okay, yeah, canine familiar, easy. Whereas Dune is kind of like a shuffle in, yeah. and you always play the same yeah, game. Yeah, that one, the modules in that one, you can only, like, there's one that the ancestors one, I believe. You have to take out the base game yeah. cards to put it's that like, one don't, in. Don't de-shuffle it, you know, yeah. it's really. So this, is this the last game? Wow, we're already there. This one is. The best game for my collection. That I've never played. The number one. The I've very never played best this game. game. Well, I've never played the my, I've never played the physical collection. You ranked these specifically in the order that you thought they deserved. Oh. I've only played this online with the designers. Okay. Because my copy just finally arrived. Okay. But the version the stuff I played online had me so excited yeah. that I couldn't wait to get the freaking game. I am really excited for Sheer to come home. We will finish this campaign yep. together. Uh, went on pause when she went down to Florida. She's been there for about five months. I keep asking her to return. I don't know why she won't. Uh, you got to take a shower, Jesse. <laughs> I've been telling you, that's the problem. <laughs> I just, uh, <laughs> that's the problem. You got to be Old clean. Thorn is a incredible boss mm -hmm. battle. Some of my favorite elements of it. I love the card system yep. where you're actually playing around this timeline where you have this ebb and flow of the, the different action economy that you get. Yep, you got to really. I love yep. opening up the boxes because yep. if you don't spoil stuff, you can just you just get these amazing moments where you pop open the crust, push open the miniature or the standee, yep. and you're like. That's what we're Holy fighting. Holy cow. Yep. The sculpts this, are brilliant. It gives you drips of information as you're trying to get yeah. to the next thing. Uh, the sculpts are brilliant. The yep. story's fantastic. Yep. Uh, there, was, there was one part of it that, for me, didn't make it beat Kingdom Death. Really? I thought it might beat Kingdom Death. Yeah. And there was one core part of it, which, which really came down to... Uh, the was it the not story having book? a velvety box? No. <laughs> it, was, it was the storybook versus the individual modules. Yeah. Sheer and I are actually playing by, going, by not going through the full in-depth storybook. We're going through the page setup. 
Okay. Uh, so that you get the story, you get the framework. Yeah. But there are some moments in the in the larger storybook yeah. uh, that just don't feel as punishing as I want it to be. Yeah. And Kingdom Death is punishing. It's very punishing. And so for a game like Oathsworn where it's dark and grim, I kind of I kind of wanted the game to not forgive me. Give it a little mistake. bit more chances. It might fulfill. It might okay. deliver later in the campaign. Yeah, it could. So this is a game I have yet to play my physical copy. So it might be a caveat because I haven't actually played as much. But the the TTS version I played the few times with the publisher was making that game when I could not wait to get in. I am so thrilled for uh, for how well Shadowborn Games did on yeah. this last campaign. I'm so happy for the fact that they survived the pandemic, barely got to the point, got to the finish line of getting people games in yep. their hands, went back to their audience, truthfully, honestly, got support from their community again. Yep. Like with, when it came to the shipping crisis, they were one of the first companies to have a public open They actually said, yeah, we need help. And, and their community showed yep. up, and man, did they deliver an amazing game. And I, I hope and, and intend to see them become another another. I'm Awakened not positive Realms, if the, if the another, late pledge is available. I'm just but saying. But it's definitely one I would take a look at. Shadow, Shadowborn Games is one of those companies that I have slated for five or ten years now yeah. to see them doing things that are different in our industry. Uh, to see them doing these these titles that are really like establishing footprints and like ledges, right? Uh, I can't wait to see what else they have in the docket because yeah. I know they yeah. they're they're developing more games and oh, from what I've be, seen here the amount of care and love I'm pretty sure we're going to have a, a great title. 100%. So that's it. Thank you guys for watching the channel. Thank you for watching the video. Let us know in the comment section down below if these games are the best games or if I'm way off base. Let me know if the games in the worst are better than the best because I think there are going to be people who are going to disagree very, with me on this one. Conversation. Jesse. You want me to end it the way that you told me to? No. Specifically, you had you had that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You can try request. it. Try it. Try it. See how it goes. <laughs> That's not my intro, so <laughs> thank you, Jess, for joining me. Talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.